Welcome to ESD Basics Bite Size Part 7. Today we're going to be looking at ESD packaging. Today we're going to look at safeguarding ESD sensitive items during transportation and storage. The third basic principle of ESD control is shielding ESD sensitive components and assemblies during storage or transportation when not in an ESD protected area. The Faraday cage is a conductive enclosure which will provide protection to the contents as charges will be restricted to the exterior surface of the enclosure. Since light charges repel, a charge on the inside will move and rest on the outside surface of the conductor. There are standard tests measuring the energy penetration of electrostatic fields or discharges to the interior. ESD protective products that provide a Faraday cage or shielding include ESD metal in bags and metal out bags, impregnated corrugated conductive boxes with buried conductive layer and other material handling containers. An impressive demonstration of the Faraday cage effect is that of an aircraft being struck by lightning. This happens frequently but does not harm the plane or the passengers. The metal body of the aircraft protects the interior and for the same reason a car may be a safe place to be in a thunderstorm. Make sure that any container used during the storage and transportation of ESD sensitive components or loaded printed circuit boards outside the ESD protected area has appropriate shielding properties to protect them from possible ESD damage. Closed ESD bags or ESD containers should be used to store or ship ESD susceptible items outside an ESD protective area. To restrict electrostatic charges to their exterior surface, Bags should be closed and containers have lids in place. ESD packaging will have charges on its exterior, so it is imperative that ESD packaging only be opened at an ESD protective workstation by properly grounded personnel. What we're going to do now is just spend a few minutes talking about different types of packaging and uh, what's the best type of packaging to use in an electrostatic protected area. The first Packaging we'll talk about is a normal polyethylene bag and as this is an insulative material it has no place in the uh, ESD protected area. I can show you a couple of quick demonstrations with this. Again using the, the digital field meter if I rub the bag and then hold it above the, uh, the meter we can see there's nearly approaching 2000 volts on there. So that shouldn't be used in the, in the ESD protected area. And what I'm also going to do now is if I place uh, one of our, it's a, an EMI meter and you can see in the display here, it will detect a, a voltage level and count how many ESD events are actually happening. If I place that inside the bag, and if I grab this little shaker here, and this is uh, just a pot carrying some, uh, some, some nuts and bolts, and if I shake that, they're going to create a, a static event when they, when they contact and separate each other. And we'll be able to see those registering on the display there. And you can see the maximum voltage and the number of ESD events happening. So whilst the ESD event is happening outside the bag, the, the, the voltage levels will be able to penetrate through the bag and what would be to the contents inside. So a normal polyethylene bag has no place in the ESD uh, area because it can bring a charge in and it offers no uh, protection to sensitive components. So we can discard that type of bag. The next bag that we very often see is the uh, pink anti-static bag. And once again, if I rub that against my trouser and hold it over there, well, what we can see here is very little charge. So it's not going to bring a charge into the work area. So therefore, if we needed to bring something into the work area that's not ESD sensitive, we can pop it inside a pink anti-static bag and it can safely go into the work area. However, there is a drawback to using these type of uh, bags. If you uh, want to use it, or we see people using them for uh, transporting and uh, storing ESD sensitive components and once again I put the meter inside the bag if I hold the, uh, the shaker above it and once again you can see the voltage being measured and the number of ESD events that are occurring so again any uh, ESD event that's outside the bag can transfer through to the contents inside 
So the only time that you should be using uh, a pink anti-static or what they, some people call as low charging bag is to take non-sensitive components into the EPA, the electrostatic protected area. Finally, if I take a static shielding bag, one of the metallized bags, and again, we'll go through the same process. And if I hold it over there, you'll see that there is really no charge on the uh, on being registered, so therefore it's not going to bring a charge into the uh, work area. Once again, taking the EMI meter, place it inside the bag. And then bring that to the camera. Hopefully that's visible to you. And I'll shake that and you can see there's no voltage going through. You're not measuring anything and there's no, the ESD event account is not going up. So therefore, this, bag, this type of bag is what you should be using for transportation and storage of static sensitive components. Now you will recall uh, just before when I was talking that um, we said that a bag should be folded over and uh, made sure that it's sealed. If not, so what I've done here is I've left the top of the bag open and if I create those ESD events, you can see the charge, because it's not closed, it goes straight through. All I have to do is just very carefully place that inside just, just, just a short way. Once it's folded over and sealed, no charge goes through. So that's the type of uh, packaging that you should be using for the transportation and storage of ESD sensitive components. And if I just go off camera just one second, and there's other types of uh, containers that you can use. This is one of our component shippers. But once again, you must make sure that when you put uh, sensitive components inside, that the container is closed and then it's forming a Faraday cage to protect the contents from ESD damage.